All right, it says we are live. We'll give it a few moments to catch up as we always do. Oh, it's on. Looks like we're good. Hello and happy Wednesday, everybody. Hello, Gun Nation. Good to see you guys, Big Johnson. Good to see you as well, my friend. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it. We'll give everybody a chance to roll in. Uh, so how is everybody doing this evening? We've already uh, had some pre-discussion here. It's always so much fun to see the, the pre-chat chat, chat uh, is I think what we should call it, and some of the conversations, things that are going on with people right now. Um, it's always fun, and we appreciate you guys coming in a little bit early. It's always fun to say howdy to you guys. Howdy. <clears throat> so uh, what's new with you, Big Johnson? What's new in the gun verse for you, my friend? Um, well, I shot the uh, STI 2011 uh, at the match on Sunday. Very first time shooting a 2011 in competition. So I've got some uh, video coming up on it and some thoughts and stuff like that. So people can tune in for that. It was very interesting. Let's put it that way. Um, and then I flew out of town and brought my gun. No issues, but there is certain things you have to do to carry your gun on an airplane if people have not done that before. So I'll kind of talk about that a little bit later. Good, good. Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah, and you know, uh, I had a lot of people kind of, and I've flown with guns tons of times, but I had, you know, I kind of put out a thing on Instagram, you know, showing how I do it. And people were like, oh, you can't use that. You can't use this. And I'm like, excuse me? So... And, you know, they give you a declaration card that you have to fill out. And it says the instructions exactly what I said, you know, and I didn't have a card with me, but I've got a card now, but I've pretty much memorized them. But it was it was just kind of funny. Well, everybody so, has an opinion. So, well, ain't that the truth? Um, so tell, tell us tell us what what you have to do. I've never done it before. I've never even looked into it before. OK, Uh well, the most important part is you never put a TSA lock on your lockbox. Uh, you actually have to put a lock, a padlock, or a combination lock, and you are the only one that has the key, or you are the only one that has the combination, as in number three of your declaration. It basically states, um, the unloaded firearm inside a hard case lock container, and I alone am in possession of the key or combination. And you have to sign that. It's a legal form. Um, you know, and people just think they can throw TSA locks on them and throw them in your suitcase, and that's not true. But there's a certain way that I do mine, and if you want to check it out on Instagram, you can kind of see how I do it. But um, it does have to be in a TSA-approved container, not the regular box that you get your gun in. Um, and it's actually very easy. I mean, it is so easy. Uh, it, I mean, I went through, and a lot of times I've gone through, and they actually want to see that the firearm is unloaded. Um, and some airlines, you have to take all of the ammo out of the magazine and it has to be in a separate container, but some of them, you can actually have the magazines loaded, uh, but they can't be in the gun, of course, but you have to have them away from the gun. So the primers could not be struck. Um, so, but it's very simple. Like when I flew here, um, the guy was like, Hey, you don't have any ammo in the gun. It's unloaded. And I was like, yes, sir. It is. Do you need to check? And he's like, Nope, I trust you. And so I filled out my card taped it on the top of the box and I've got it locked in my luggage and boom. And now TSA and I have been paged one time. And then the guy was like, uh, I need to get your key. Cause we need to check your, you know, I had already gone to the gate this was like 30 minutes later. And then they paged me on the loudspeaker in the airport and wanted me to come back. So I went back to TSA and they go, we need to get your key. So, you know, we can go back and check your stuff. And I said, no, you don't get my key. I keep my key. And he's like, no, no. When he started arguing with me and I was like, get your supervisor. And I wasn't trying to be an ass, but he turned into one. So I got a supervisor and then the supervisor was like, yeah, we'll escort you back there because you're correct. You don't give us the key. Went back there, opened it up. They looked at it, locked it back up. I locked it back up. I took my key, went back to the gate. It was all good. Interesting. Interesting. Real quickly, because I want to come back to this, uh, but uh, Johnny Danger is saying no live KS. I'm not sure what that means, Johnny. Uh, we are definitely live, <laughs> so uh, so fill, fill me in when you can. But uh, okay, so um, I'm actually sort of surprised that you can keep ammo in the box with the gun, although I think it's great. Now, it also makes sense um, that it's unloaded, and I would imagine magazines would need to be out of the gun, um, although I don't know how that works. Um, I mean, I would 
instinct instinctively i would have no ammo in the box um, that would just be me and then i would have a chamber flag in there uh, just to kind of you know indicate highlight that uh, th that the gun is not racked it's not loaded that sort of thing and again that's just my instinct to show respect mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but that's fascinating and that's that's cool that tsa rules say and somebody even said it in here i think yeah c kim said uh, loaded magazines are fine yeah on some airlines uh southwest they're fine uh delta I did have to unload the magazines and I had to put them in a separate box. Um, luckily I had room, um, but uh, they want them, you know, some want them in a manufactured like ammo box uh, and some, you know, they can just be in a box, but uh, they don't want them loose rounds or in a bag, but uh, it just depends on the airlines, but every airline you use your regular lock. You don't use a TSA lock. Now, do you, with your, um, your TSA approved box, kind of like that condition one that I did. It, this, and I it know. Is a, yep. It, mine's a condition one. Nice. Nice. Um, so that, that has to be checked in though. That goes under the plane. You don't keep it with you. Correct. Yes, yeah. You, you can't keep it with you. Sure. Uh, you know, and what's, what's funny is some of, you know, like I just brought one single gun and a couple of magazines, but, um, you know, I've got the small box and you don't want to send a small box just by itself. You know, you want to put it in luggage or, you know, put that box inside of a larger box, you know, a TSA box, because those little small items like a small little gun by itself could get misplaced. So, yeah. OK, and so and so they would actually allow you to do that. So if you've got a, a bigger luggage bag, um, as long as you've declared and you've done all your thing, you can then put it in a bigger bag if you want. Yes. Um, <coughs> well, it's going to show. Um, well, since I'm on the phone, maybe I can do it this way. Look at that. A little trickery there. We're, we're taking a tour of his hotel room. Can you see it right there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. See, it's actually chained right there. I've got the cable, and the cable's running through the arm. Uh, you know how you pull your luggage thing up? Yeah. So, and those are the locks right there. Interesting. Okay. All right. And it's even orange. That's cool. And, and, and a great product placement for condition one. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, they make, they make great cases. They really, really do. I mean, there's, you know, and I've had a Pelican and I even have a Pelican, uh, but man, for the price and the quality and everything, you just can't beat them. Plus they're made in Texas. So yeah. I try to support my local guys. Well, they're incredibly nice too. Uh, I mean, just su super nice to work with. That case that I uh, reviewed this weekend, it is phenomenal. Now, it is all decorated with stickers now. Um, it, uh, it's not the plain uh, uh, OD green anymore, but uh, but it's, it's a good looking case. Yeah, and that's one thing, you know, um, I don't really put stickers on the outside of my cases. Uh, and the reason being is, you know, like when you see people pulling stuff, like I've got the large one that I can, you know, I've got multiple ones, but... Um, I just don't, I want people to think that they're like tools or something, you know, that I might work with. I don't really want everybody to, you know, when they see Glock stickers or all this other stuff, it gives a lot of people weird ideas. So I just try to keep it a little more discreet personally. Oh, that's really funny. Sorry. Sheck Jesus was saying, did anybody else see the prostitutes sobbing in the corner? <laughs> that's phenomenal. No, I promise there's not one in here. Uh, that is too funny, too funny. Well, that's really fascinating. I'm, I'm glad to learn a little bit more about it. And it sounds a little bit more painless than I assumed it would be. Yeah, it is. And you know, you can have some TSA agents that aren't properly, you know, or there might be new on the job and they just assume, but, uh, never give a TSA agent your key and let them go behind, you know, a, a, a thing or something. They can bring it out to you. And I even told the guy, I'm like, you can bring it out to me. Uh, and I'll, we can do it right here. And he's like, it's a firearm. And I'm like, it's not even loaded, you know, but I'm not just going to give you my keys and let you do what you want. Right. You know, because that's your property. And I, I told him, I said, those are my guns. I'm responsible for the guns. You know, I'm responsible for that key, not you. So, and the supervisor, you know, said I was right. So you just, you know, it's all about knowing the law and just, you know, just being a nice guy. I mean, you know, you don't, if you just start being an ass right off the bat, they're going to treat you like crap. Well, I would think that they would uh, make it very difficult for you to get on a plane at that yeah. point in time. Yeah. And that is, I mean, that's, it's crappy, but it's their right to do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. They can, they can hold you up. They can, they can make it kind of painful if you want. Right. Right. That's exactly right. So. They respect me. I respect them. That's kind of how it is.
All right. Um, well, so uh, guys, um, aside from TSA chat, uh, which is very interesting, we uh, we don't have a, a much of an agenda tonight. Just uh, you know, wanted to talk guns with you guys as we always do. I do see a question out there. Johnny Danger uh, said, uh, "When is your STI vid coming?" So um, I, and you may not be aware, but uh, but added actually to the collection. Got the P as well. I, I was really curious to know. The differences between the C and the P, if you guys know the C is the single stack, the P is the double stack, this is a big gun. Um, and I uh, wanted to get to know the nuances of the two because I think one will stay and one will go. They won't both stay, that can't happen. Um, so really wanted to figure out which one was gonna be the one that I would enjoy forever. Um, and, uh, and so the STI videos will be coming. These, this weekend, I think the uh, the MPX video is coming out. Um, I still have some work to do on that. I got delayed last night a little bit, so still have some more work to do on it. But uh, um, yeah, so anyway, STIs are coming, I swear, at some point. Yeah, yeah and I'll be doing the review on mine. You know, I, I kind of did pictures on Instagram and stuff, kind of let people see that I had it, uh, talked a little bit about it on chats, but I really wanted to, you know, do a lot of, I've taken it to the range like three times I've already put after this weekend, it's already had uh, about probably a total of 1500 rounds, 1600 rounds through it. So I put a ton of rounds through it. So I didn't just want to, you know, put 20 rounds through it or 50 rounds or hundred rounds. I wanted to try to really distinguish it between the TSO. So I would be, have, have a lot of, you know, information or my opinion, I guess I should say, um, you know, my, maybe this one versus the TSO kind of, and in a com I wanted to wait till I shot it in a competition so I could see what it was like. Right. Right. Well, I, you know, I'm looking forward to that. I think it'll be very interesting to get a perspective on that because they are, they're really very different firearms. Yeah. Oh, they're totally different. Um, you know, a lot of people think double stack is a double stack, but there's a lot of little things that really add up. Um, and it definitely showed on Sunday. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, hopefully people will be interested in it. Like I said, it's just going to be from my opinion, um, you know, since now I've shot both of them. Right, right. All right. So um, we do have a question here and I just lost it. Uh, MD Polo was saying thoughts on the CZ Rami BD as a daily CCW. Uh, if, if anybody's been following me uh, and, I, you know, I've had tons of questions on the Rami. Why don't I own one? Why don't I have one? Why don't you know? So. I kind of, you know, put pictures out again on Instagram because uh, people were actually asking, you know, how does it fit your hand? How do you like it? Things like that. And the thing is tiny. It is tiny uh, with the standard magazine in it. Now, when you put the extension on it, uh, it actually gives you a, a better grip for me. Um, you know, I've, I have, a, no, I haven't, I've only dry fired it. I haven't physically shot one um, or did I shoot one? I can't remember. It's been so long ago. Maybe I did shoot one. It just... I don't really think there was anything from that. It, it actually shot a little more, or I think it feels, it just feels a little more weird in the hand than the PO one for me. Um, so I've just never been interested in purchasing one. Um, that's just my opinion. You know, I know people have them and really like them. I know people who have them that do not like them, uh, but I just, they have an interest in me personally. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, the, the Rami, every time I pick one up, especially with the flat base magazine, um, I, I just, I struggle with that a little bit. It does not inspire me very much. Um, I, you know, if I'm going to do that, I would stick to something like a Glock 26, which I know there's no comparison between the two, uh, certainly in terms of quality, in my opinion. I, I think the CZ is going to be a, a better gun, but uh, um, and I don't know that for sure. I'm guessing, but uh, uh, but I just I, I, I just I pick it up and I'm like, I can't do it, man. I, that's not my thing. I mean, you mentioned the PO1. It's been a while since I've had this little guy out. Uh, mm -hmm. I still this is one of my favorite guns. This just. I'm telling you, man, that it, it just molds to the hand. It feels so good. Um, I, it's it's tough to go wrong with a PO1, in my opinion. Yeah, and you know, also the benefit of the PO1 is it takes 75 mags, so you could put a full size mag in it. You can run, you know, the PO1 mags in it. But the Rami is a whole different magazine, and it really is its own magazine. It doesn't share that magazine with another CZ pistol. So, and they're not cheap. Those mags are like 40. I think I've seen them for 46 bucks. So I just don't, I don't see a reason to introduce that, um, you know, because the PO1 shares the, 
you know, the TSO, or excuse me, the uh, Shadow 2 mags, you know, the SP-01 mags. I mean, there's a lot of, of uh, shared sharing mags there. So right. compatibility, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Right. So a couple of things. Uh, first, Jim Rose said that he bought a Colt Knight Defender and a Gold Cup National Match, both unfired yesterday. So congratulations, Jim. That's wow. very cool. Uh, some big scores there for sure. I'm sure they're gorgeous guns. Um, and then we do have a question from Fina. Uh, do you guys believe in one suppressor for many calibers or one suppressor per caliber? It's a very interesting question. Yeah, and I was going to say, I know that, you know, you know, I, now I don't own a suppressor personally, um, but I know KS and I have talked about this many times and I've talked about this with other people. I believe in a suppressor that would take many or the most calibers it could. Um, I think you're going to get a lot more service if you have those calibers. If you only have a nine millimeter, then, you know, you don't need multiple caliber suppressors. But um, I think it's interesting to have one or two that, pretty much can handle all your rifles and pistols. I totally agree. Um, so, and, and I haven't told anybody yet because this happened yesterday, but guess what happened? Get your tax stamp. I got my tax stamp. I finally oh, got it guys. So it was just under a year. If you guys can believe that it was 11 months that I had to wait to get my tax stamp, which, which the, um, at the time when I got it and the check was cashed, the waiting period was about six months. 11 months later, I did get it, but, uh, but I'm excited about that. So, um, so uh, some of you guys know, I've got an Omega 45 K and this kind of goes along with your question, Fina, um, the Omega 45 K will run most common pistol calibers with a few exceptions. I don't know if it'll do like a 357 SIG because of the pressures, but it'll do 45, it'll do nine, it'll do uh, 380 ACP, things like that. It'll also do 300 blackout. Um, so it covers a pretty wide variety of calibers there. And I like that for me, I kind of figured, I don't know if I'm going to do more than one suppressor. I don't know if it makes sense to do that because it's a pretty good expense. I mean, all told, I, I spent about nine hundred dollars on that, and that's that. You know, that's that's an archon and some ammo or whatever, however you want to look at that. So that's a pretty good expense, but it allows me the opportunity as a reviewer to uh, run a can on, of course, nine, which I run most of the time, but also forty-five or some other calibers as well. So there's a little bit of flexibility in there, and it cuts down on cost because I can run that same can on multiple calibers. Um, so I'm a fan of that. There are other people that say nope, one can per gun. That's a that's a host. And, and be that as it may. I mean, I, I've got a buddy who has a lot of cans um, and he, he has them designated for different guns for different reasons. Um, and that means he's not changing out adapters and all that kind of stuff. It's something that I have to deal with. I have to do a different adapter um, for any caliber or thread pitch or anything like that. So um, so there isn't necessarily a right answer, but, uh, but I, I, like Big Johnson, I, I prefer one can for multiple calibers. Yeah, I think it's just, you know, not only cost savings, you know, for one, I don't know. If, I mean, and trust me, if, if they weren't so difficult to get, yeah, I would have multiple ones. But, you know, I, I just think if you can get one that serves multiple purposes, I think that's the better option for me. Right, right. Uh, I, I totally agree with that. Oh, and real quick on the uh, on the Gold Cup, you know, Andy Polo has that one that's never been fired, too. So those things are freaking awesome. Uh, just gorgeous. Um, I, and I'll tell you what, um, I was, I was talking to him offline a little bit and I told him I would actually, I, you know, that's not been racked. It's not been shot or anything like that. I would struggle with that. That is, yeah. that, that would be tough. Now I've got some guns that I don't run very much like the TSO, that sort of thing. And I've got some that I guess you could call kind of safe Queens a little bit, although I will shoot them and I have shot them. I, I would struggle with the idea of a gun that I couldn't at least kind of kind of rack and, and play around with a little bit. Um, I, I like to, I like to do that. And so that, that would be an exceptional discipline to have. And it's not something that I, I think I can do. And see, for me, uh, you know, I have multiple other guns like you do. So, I mean, if I want to shoot a 1911, I've got other 1911s that I can shoot and I don't worry about, but for that one, and if you know how he got it, uh, but for that one, you know, and I've talked to him too, uh, I would not, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't shoot it. You know, I, w I mean, y'all would of course hold it and play with it. And, you know, I mean, very sentimental thing, but uh, I would have no problem just shooting the other guns and enjoying them and keeping that one just pristine and not shooting it because the value is only going to go higher. I mean, that could be passed down and passed down. I mean, 
but uh, yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Sorry, I was I was trying to catch up on a couple of quick things here. Uh, Scott Scott is saying, Rami, no small fat and heavy, just get a PO one. Yeah, I you know that's that's the thing. It's it's an odd. To me, it's an odd combination there. I mean, that grip is super wide, um, but it's really small too. It's just, it feels, it feels a little foreign, but I, I know some people, in fact, uh, was it farm freak? Um, he's on yeah. quite often, he's a big Ramy fan. I mean, there it's, there it's got a dedicated following. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, I know work has his and he shoots it, but he has, I think he has a lot of likes and dislikes. Um, but it just wouldn't work for me. Just too, way too small. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Dave Gast does have a question for you, my friend. Uh, do you go to ranges while you're on the road? Yes. Yes. Um, now, this particular week, I'm not. But uh, when I travel, especially in my truck, um, yeah, I bring multiple guns with me. Um, a lot of people that I travel with and stuff, some enjoy shooting. And when I know that, I'll bring extra guns. And yeah, I do go shooting a lot on the road. And yeah. I've, filmed, I've even filmed a lot of stuff on the road. Hell, when I came to see you, you know, I was working uh, there and I was actually, uh, you know, you and I went and shot and I brought all those guns too. So, right. Yeah. I feel weird. I feel weird without, I mean, I feel of course great with at least one gun, but uh, you know, some of the areas I travel to are not gun friendly and they don't recognize my Texas CHL, which is a joke. Uh, but yeah, I feel naked without a gun. It's because it's just part of, you know, my EDC every day. Sure. No, I totally get that. Totally get it. Um, Killer Coiler has a question for both of us. What are your thoughts on U.S. Law Shield and U.S. CCA? Is one better than the other, and is it really worth your money? Uh, well, I have had Texas Law Shield. I had it for about three. No, it was close to four years. It was over three and a half years. Uh, I canceled it. I bought FLP, which is firearms legal protection. Uh, it offers more benefits um, for really the same money. And I'm not trying to push the product. You know, whatever you choose is what you choose. Um, they offer like cleanup because if there is an incident, and I'll say incident, if there is, there's going to be cleanup uh, hazmat. So they're going to have to have special teams and they pay for that. Uh, there's also going to be a defensive uh, or a criminal. And then there's going to be a... Um, uh, what is it with uh, a personal one? Uh, civil. Then you're going to have a civil suit, you know, too. Uh, they take care of both of those. Um, and also you've got, I've got a lawyer 24 hours a day. So it's a direct line, not a phone bank. Uh, it goes to the lawyer personally in the state that I'm in. Uh, and that's why I chose them. So, but whatever you choose, you know, do your homework, look at all the pros and the cons. And yes, it's worth it. You know, I look at it as, I have to have car insurance, but I might not ever wreck my car, but that situation is different. And, um, uh, I believe in it. So I've had it for quite a long time. Hmm. Interesting. Um, so I, you know, and, and all, all very good points for sure. Um, I do not carry it. Um, I, I carry a lawyer in my back pocket. Um, I, I've got a couple of good lawyers. And so that to me, it, it, it balances itself out. Um, I mean, there might not be some, some extras there that, uh, that big Johnson is getting, but, uh, but as long as, as, you, as long as you've got some coverage there, because uh, nobody else is going to be looking out for your best interests. Only you are. So, um, you know, be, be thoughtful about that sort of thing and whatever makes sense for your situation, whatever it is. Um, I think that's really important. So, yeah, I will, I will say this. Uh, if they're curious, a lot of your homeowners insurances. OK, now, legally, we all know if someone breaks into our home, we can do what we need to do. However, a lot of your home insurance is not responsible and you can call them and ask. I did. They are not responsible for an incident that happens in your home. So your home insurance will not defend you. And a lot of people think they will, but they won't. Uh, right. So, you know, I, I would just weigh it all out. The, the reason I, I chose to go with this is because, right, you can have a lawyer in your back pocket. However, you know, you're going to have to come up with a lot of cash and you're going to have to, you know, it's going it, to, it could drain you pretty quick. You know, your savings could be put out there and things like that. So, I would just say, do your homework, speak to different outfits and get different opinions and then choose your, what you choose for yourself and your family. Right. Absolutely. Uh, no doubt about that. Um, all right. Uh, Paul has a question. Uh, KS, do you still prefer the 26 over the P10S as far as shootability? I do. Um, I, you know, the, the Glock 26, I, I've really come back to 
uh, full circle with um, and, and enjoy it quite a bit. Um, those of you who follow me on Instagram, you might have seen some sneak peeks either on my Instagram or actually um, uh, Thrash Tactical. Uh, we've been working together on a on a new build coming up. I did, yeah. just got the slide today, um, so I don't have the sights on it or anything like that. So a uh, little a little twenty six build, but uh, um, I you know I just I dig them. Uh, I think they feel good. The P10S, I like. It's a good gun. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It's got a phenomenal trigger. There's no doubt. That one that I've been using, um, it is, it's starting to break in a little bit, um, actually, naturally. So I'm scraping enough of that back point of that safety lever now to where it's not catching as much. It still does occasionally. Uh, but I haven't had to sand it off. Now, I did with the P10F. Um, and that took care of it right away. It's been fine. But, uh, um, but uh, yeah, just the, the Glock 26, man, I think it's... For size versus capacity, I think the 26 is really difficult to beat. Um, I know there's the the 365 out there, and that's a fine gun too. I don't think it's as shootable as the Glock 26. Uh, the Glock 26 has a little bit more meat and potatoes to it, at least from my hands. I'm I'm more likely to enjoy shooting that at the range than I am something like the 365. Yeah, as far as the 26, I I've shot it. I've never owned one, but I have shot one. Um, and I've never shot a P10S. I've never even put my hands on an S yet. Um, so I don't know on that, but I've shot the 26 and it's not my favorite pistol. Uh, it's kind of a little chunky. And what I chose to go with for that size was the MNP 9C. Um, cause I can use the X grip, uh, the little fill in and I can run the full size mags in it. Uh, but I've, I can shoot it. Okay. As long as I have the thumb extension, the little thumb pinky thing on the 9C and the 9C shoots really well for me, but. You know, that's kind of what I compare the M&P. You know, a lot of people are like, the 26 is not the same as the 9C, and actually it is uh, as far as what M&P was going for Smith & Wesson. But I think whatever works for you, by all means, use it. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, Honest Outlaws out there, by the way. Honest, good cool, to see you. Um, I hear you did a, a shadow versus a Walther Q5 steel frame. I can't wait to watch that. Um, I want to know your opinion about that. So I'm, I'm stoked to have something to do after the chat tonight. So I know which one he's picking, but I'm oh, still watch. no, no, I meant I, I already know just because I know him. I haven't seen it and he hasn't told me, but I bet you I know which one he picks, but I'm going to watch it after two. So. I know what he picked. He picked a Glock 19. <laughs> God, <Yeah>. duh. Yeah. <laughs> the Gucci Glock. Uh, Johnny Danger saying the Glock 26 doesn't get enough love. I agree. Um, I, I absolutely agree. There are a lot of people who say if you're going to carry a 26, just carry a 19. I do not agree with that. Um, I think there are a lot of pluses to the 26. So somebody else had mentioned in here a minute ago, and I've scrolled past because I was so far behind, but uh, somebody had talked about the uh, the Breda 92X. That seems to be kind of a kind of an it gun right now. A lot of people have been talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looks really good. I've only seen pictures. I haven't seen it in person, but it looks really nice. Um, you know, I like the color of it and it's built, uh, you know, I read the description of it. Um, and I think it's, they're going after, you know, more of the competition line, but um, I think it's, I think it's going to be pretty nice. I personally probably still wouldn't buy one. I've had the 92 in the past. Now I know this is the better version of 92, but uh, yeah, it looks really nice. Very cool. Very cool. Um, interesting question. Young Guns is saying, uh, and it was to me, but I, I think we can kind of uh, break this open a little bit if you don't mind, Young Guns. He said, have you ever changed your mind uh, after any of your, if I could only have one results? And so I guess my question back to everybody is, have you ever, um, you know, compared two guns for whatever reason you're going to buy them, you have them already and you're you're kind of playing around with them and and sort of picked in your mind what you thought your favorite was and then at some point down the road however long it is weeks months years whatever it is come back and said you know it's, i do not feel that way anymore um i feel completely the opposite way big johnson do you ever get that at all i have uh and you know early when i started youtube you know i would shoot i don't know 200 rounds through a gun and then i would kind of give my opinion uh that's why now i really want to shoot a lot more because your first 200 rounds or, you know, even your first 100 rounds, you know, you're excited, you've got a new gun, unless it's just horrific and, you know, the thing locks up all the time. But uh, I, I think giving it a little more time, spending, a, you know, spending some ammo on it, things like that, uh, I think that's going to give you a little better result. However, I've had some over the years where I have definitely fallen out of love with them. So, yes. Hmm. 
Interesting. Interesting. Well, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to think back. I think I've done 26 or 27 of those episodes, something like that. Uh, and I can't recall any that stick out that uh, that I've changed my mind on uh, per se. Uh, there were some that could go either way, uh, depending on the day. I mean, the, the one that just came out, the Archon and the uh, M9A2 from uh, A1, rather, from Steyr, both phenomenal guns, and I enjoy both of them a lot. Um, I could probably go either way on that. I mean, I dig that Archon quite a bit, but uh, um, I, I can't think of any that I would go back necessarily and change my mind on and nothing nothing comes to mind anyway um and and that's not to say i haven't changed my mind you guys know i have and i think we all do over time for a variety of reasons um our needs change or uh in terms of guns maybe our grip change uh, changes how we approach a gun um I, any number of things can can change so yeah absolutely glock 26 again is a perfect example of that um i mean i i truly came full circle. Uh, if you'd asked me six months ago what I would have thought of the Glock 26, I would have said, yeah, it's a good gun. It's just not for me. I, I'm, I, I disagree with myself <laughs> on that. Um, so yeah, I, I think, I, I think it's good to challenge yourself a little bit like that too. Now question, uh, you know, kind of, kind of on that, but not really, uh, if you could only pick one, but is, was there a gun that you had for or multiple guns or whatever for like a couple of years that you're just like, man, this is my go-to EDC. You know, I love this gun. And then like after a full year or longer, you're like, mm, I don't like this gun anymore. After shooting other guns, is there any that have been like that with you? Yeah, two actually that I can think of. And it's uh, real quickly, Honest Outlaw was saying he hated the VP9, but uh, a lot, but he likes it now. So very interesting uh, for sure. I, I want to hear more about that uh, at some point in time. But uh, uh, yeah, the Glock 43. Okay. When it first came out, man, I was all about it. I, uh, I, I, I bought the first one that Centerfire had when, uh, when that gun first came out and I was super excited and I carried it pretty religiously for at least a year. Um, and, uh, and it was a good gun there's, and it still is, it's a good gun. There's nothing wrong with it. But as I started to really spend more time with Smith and Wesson shield, which I had had one, um, it might even have been prior to the Glock 43. I can't remember. Shield's been out longer, I believe. Um, Mm -hmm. And it was a good gun, uh, but uh, when the Glock 43 came out, I was pretty much a Glock. We'll we'll say fanboy. Um, I you know I was like, oh, it's got to be a Glock. It's got to be a Glock. Um, I no longer think that way anymore. Uh, but uh, but the Glock 43 kind of I fell out of favor of, and I've never really gone back. I've been pretty consistent about that. I mean, um, there again, if somebody gave that to me and said this is what you have to run with, I, that'd be fine. It, it's okay. I'd make that work but it would not be my preference at all anymore. Um, there are just some that I, I gravitate towards the shield being shield being a great example of that. And then the Glock 42, believe it or not as well. I mean, I had one of those right when they came out because uh, I still am a fan of a 380. I think there's a practical application for it. And that gun is tiny. Um, and, and it's still, as far as, uh, 380s go, it's still reasonably enjoyable to shoot, but, uh, but I don't enjoy it as much as I used to. And part of it has to do with the experience of triggers, um, the Glock 43 and Glock 42 triggers, even the 43 X and the 48, I don't think they're as good. I think the gen five bigger gun triggers have gotten significantly better out of the box. The little guns, I don't think they have not made as noticeable an improvement on those as I would have liked. And if if that had changed more dramatically, I would I would feel a lot better about them. Now the Glock 43X, I am thoroughly enjoying. The 48, I could live with or live without. Um, I'm not in a magazine restricted state, a capacity restricted state. I don't care about that as much. Um, so the 48, eh, it's fine. It was whatever. Uh, but the 43X, I'm enjoying quite a bit more. Cool. Yeah, mine would be, you know, and you know this. I mean, I was in love with the SIG P320. I loved it, compact. I mean, I even had the extended mags, you know, the whole works. Uh, I had, what, three frames for that thing. One highly stippled and battle-worn finish and the whole works. And loved that pistol. Shot it good. Still, you know, I can still shoot one good. But uh, I had it for probably about a year. And, I mean, it was almost, or a year and a half, actually. And it was probably my go-to, like, every day. And I put the apex trigger in it and stuff. I really enjoyed it. And then it was just like I fell out of love with it. Um, you know, it just didn't do it for me anymore. And it was funny that I didn't, I can't see the comments just so I'll know I'm having to do this on the phone because my computer died. Um, so, and the other one uh, was a VP9. You know, I shot it, shot it good. Uh, you know, actually shot it even better than the PPQ. And, uh, but I just fell out of love with that gun too. 
Uh, not that it's a bad gun. I'm not discrediting anyone's gun. If you've got a P320 or a VP9, that's not what it's about. But um, just for me, I kind of fell out of love with both of those. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand. Um, Scott P was uh, uh, asking a question a little while ago, actually asking it to Honest Outlaw, and Honest may have answered it. I haven't scrolled all the way down yet, but uh, he was asking, what would you recommend for someone's first pistol-mounted red dot? Hmm. Well, I mean, I've tried the Delta Point Pro, and now, now this is the thing, and please do this. If you have not bought uh, a red dot, or you haven't had any experience with a carry optic, what I would recommend doing is going to a store where you can pick these up and turn them on. You know, they won't mount them on a, you know, and if they're mounted on a pistol, fine, but look through it, um, you know, dial it up, dial it down, check your, you know, your um, brightness because I have astigmatism uh, and a lot of people do and don't really even know it. Uh, and what I found is on the Delta Point Pro, and it's a great optic. I mean, it's a huge window. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. However, on the Delta Point Pro, I uh, bought it, put it on the Glock, ran it for a long time, and it actually blooms a little bit. So it kind of flowers up, even when I had it on a small dot. And now I have the Trigicon RMR, and it doesn't bloom as much. So it depends on the glass. It depends on your stigmatism. From what I understand, there's multiple different ones that people can have. Uh, so I would recommend doing that before you maybe just, you know, spend four or $500 on one and you don't have any experience with it. Um, but you know, I'm really liking the RMR, the Trigicon RMR right now. Nice. Uh, you got a good deal on it too. Yeah. Um, I, and so I, I don't have any experience with an RMR. I, I mean, I've held them before and they are, they are exceptionally tiny and I know they're very robust. Leopold Delta Pro, uh, same way. I mean, they're they're robust. Uh, my experiences are more along the lines of like the Burst Fast Fire, the Vortex Viper and Venom, uh, and now the, uh, the the Hollow Sun I've been playing around with. I uh, got that on the Loki Tactical build. Um, and I've put some rounds through this. I don't have anything on film yet. I was just kind of playing around with it uh, just to see how it would work. And I had a great experience uh, with it. So I've been very impressed with that. Uh, that that'll be a long-term study. So um, I, I can't say anything about durability or anything yet. But the Vortex I've had great experience with. And and I, and for red dots, and I different people have different views on this, uh, budget-wise, uh, I'm a little bit more budget-sensitive to red dots because I really don't want to spend a whole lot of money on on some of them. I mean, you know, Trigicons, a lot of times are, you know, four, five, six hundred dollars whatever it is. Um, and, and I, I kind of have a liking for something that's a little bit closer to maybe the $300 range or something like that. Um, I appreciate that about the hollow sun and vortex. Uh, they're a little bit less expensive. Burris is the same way. Now there's some sacrifices there. I mean, it, the durability, again, I don't know if it's quite as durable, but, uh, but if it's a range plinker, home defense, things like that, I think these are perfectly good as well. Yeah. And you know, the humble marksman, I mean, he shoots carry optics and he's got, Three Delta Point Pros, um, you know, he's got all kinds that he's been testing, the SIG even. And, you know, I would recommend checking out his and, you know, seeing, you know, I know he said a bunch of great things about different ones. So maybe he can check out his video and get different opinions. Nice, nice. Real quickly, MD Polo, thank you very much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, $4.99. Um, he said to ease the tax stamp pain. Much appreciated. There you go. There you go. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, much appreciated. It's funny. Um, now that I actually have the little tax stamp, there's it's literally, literally is a little stamp with some writing on it, the serial number and that sort of thing. So kind of a kind of a fascinating little deal there. And and um, I was told, do not lose that. Yeah. <laughs> so and I was gonna say, even if you go to a different state, you have to notify the other state you're bringing it in or have your tax stamp with you at all times. And I mean, there's there's quite a bit to it. Yeah. And uh, West Coast Chicano, thank you very much also for the super chat. I'm 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 so far behind guys on the yeah. on the chat. You guys talk so much, which is just fantastic. So I, I apologize uh that uh, that I'm behind on that, but thank you very much as well. Appreciate it. Um yeah, uh, Paul Paul was saying about the uh, the Glock 48 and the 43X uh, come out with beaver tail back straps. He would buy one again. It just cuts the it cuts the hell out of him. And you guys know if you saw my 43X video uh, by by the time the 48 came out, it was a little bit more healed. But yeah, those things cut me pretty good on this this stupid bump on my thumb. And I think this is permanent now. I have a permanent mark here because of that. So <laughs> hey, women love slide bite. I. I Mm, I hadn't heard that, but uh, there's actually a right. shirt. There's actually a shirt that says "Ladies Love Slide Bite." 
Oh, well, different strokes, man. Different yeah. strokes. Yeah, Glock, uh, Glock Gen 3, man, it tears my hand up when I get a really high purchase on it. It just eats the meat right off the back of it. Yeah, yeah. It's that is that is not fun. It's not fun at all. And Harry's holsters in the house. Appreciate hey, you. Harry. Good to see you. Uh, Ree is saying my first red dot uh, was a Hollow Sun 507C for the Glock 20 SF. Since then, I've purchased three RMR 3.5 dots. The Hollow Sun is great, but I like the RMR a tad bit better. And that, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it all depends on, I think, your eyes. In fact, I had a conversation with somebody in the comments. It was more an argument, I'll admit. Uh, because I said that I appreciated the field of view of the Vortex uh, Venom more so than I think it might have been the Burris or something like that, uh, because it's a little bit wider. There's a, a bigger field of view, and he said that it, there's no such thing. That is not a thing. Red dots don't have a field of view, because well, if you're shooting properly and your eyes are open, your field of view is everything. And, and he wasn't necessarily wrong, but that little glass there is also a field of view, in my opinion. And also when you're shooting it, you know, the, the pistol's going to rise. So the dot, you could lose it. And if you have a taller window, it's, it's can be beneficial. Um, so yes, I, uh, I would agree with you. Well, I would hope so. Geez. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Getting caught up here. Uh, seeing if I guys, if, if, if I've missed a question because, uh, big Johnson's got a cell phone tonight, so I'm running solo on the comments here. Be sure to say it again and use the little call out at uh, chaos gun guy. Uh, so I can find that. Um, and I apologize if we've missed a question, but, uh, you guys, you guys are having some great conversations out there for sure. Yeah. We appreciate everybody being on too. Heck yeah. Uh, Dennis B is saying Vortex Spitfire 3X is on his Rock River AR-15. Nice. I, man, Vortex. Vortex makes good stuff. Yeah, and you can't beat the lifetime warranty either. That's really awesome. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, I uh, I have not used Vortex, but Burris, um, I actually, the first Burris Fast Fire 3 that I got, it did run into an issue. And man, they had one in flight before I ship mine out, uh, which was very cool. And that was a, uh, there was long, I mean, it was when I have maybe seven or 800 sub subscribers or something like that. So it's not like it was a gun channel thing at all. They just, they didn't question it. They said, yeah, give us your address. We'll send one right out and, and we'll send a label and all that kind of stuff. It was very cool. Yeah. And you know, it's always great when companies take care of people, you know, I hate the ones where you try to reach out to the company and they just ignore you. So it's always a great thing when they have great customer service. Right. Uh, to totally agree with that. Um, Johnny Danger has a question uh, uh, for you and I both. Any idea if Chris Arms will be doing anything with their SDP line? Very good question. Um, well, I mean, I have, you know, I have uh, Chris SDP, you know, the Sphinx, and um, I really like it, but they haven't, you know, from what I understand, and, you know, please look it up, but what, from what I understand, you know, Chris in Switzerland, um, don't make those anymore. And so Chris USA bought them or bought those. And now there are a lot of U S production ones and it'll say U S or Switzerland on it. Um, you know, they've talked about, there's another company coming out with a Sphinx or they're calling it the Phoenix. If you look it up, it'll, it's not Chris, it's called the Phoenix and it is an incredible gun. Uh, I mean, looking gun and it's just like a Sphinx, but a bigger version. And they're going to be building it, but I, they're talking about trying to find, I guess, someone to import it, or they're trying to get approved to import it. Uh, but, man, it would be an awesome pistol. I love my Sphinx. I mean, the SDP Compact is a great shooting pistol, and you've shot mine also. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're, they're phenomenal guns. But, yeah. you know, I've also, you know, I've got videos where it's the Sphinx SDP versus the CZP07, you know, and it just depends on your your budget too i mean is it something you have to have no um it's just more of a refined it's kind of like you know and, and even bald has said this he owns one but he says you know it's kind of like the rolex of the czp07 that's kind of i guess if you want to put it that way that's an easy way to put it but it's not a must have if you have a p07 yeah yeah i enjoyed it um i actually prefer it over the p07 so yeah and a lot of people who have shot it, they said the exact same thing. They're just like, this is much better than the PO7. But, you know, I can carry either one of them and they're fine. Um, I like the flatter trigger on the PO7 with the Omega. Uh, but you can't get a hooked tr or a non-hooked trigger for a Sphinx. I've never seen one available and it's not compatible with the CZ. Uh, so 
but I have gotten the modern weapon system trigger kit in it. And literally my SDP is like carrying a compact shadow too. I mean, it shoots phenomenal. Nice. Matter of fact, I've got a video where I shot, I was at 10 yards and I shot a, I think it's 10 rounds and you could put a dime or a nickel over it. And I was, it really actually surprised me. Nice. Very, very accurate gun. Nice. Yeah, there is fun gun to shoot for sure. Um, Mountaineer Marksman is saying Venom versus Viper is an example of field of view. Precisely. Um, totally agree with that, 100%. Dexter is asking, um, is the uh, 509 trigger smoothed out uh, yet? So you see the, f uh, oh, oh it's, it's a question. You see the 509 trigger smooth out video yet? I have not yet. I'm behind on those videos. It's on my watch list, so I know I need to watch that soon. Uh, mine smoothed out by itself naturally. I just shot it a lot. So um, so I, I'll be curious to know uh, what he did on that. <laughs> um, Re is asking or saying the nice thing about the RMR, uh, if your red dot goes down, uh, down and bracket the owl ears and hit pretty good. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that right here. Uh, the nice thing about the RMR, if your red dot goes down, you and bracket the owl ears and hit pretty good. I'm not sure what that means, Ree. Um, okay. I'm assuming it's the ears on the top of the. Yeah, the he's probably, probably talking about the sides. I would assume like the field goal post. Uh, and I've, you know, I did it off camera. I was with Humble and I turned the RMR all the way down to where I couldn't see the dot. I mean, I guess I turned it off and I was, you know, just shooting it through the window because the, the sites don't co-witness yet on mine. And um, I was hitting pretty decent sized groups at 10 yards. I mean, but I kind of look at it this way. You can, you know, if you've shot a lot, you can kind of point shoot a pistol. I'm not saying it's going to be like shoot them in the eyeball, but I mean, it's, you can pretty much point shoot a pistol. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I don't have the sights on this thing yet. And at short distances, I would say probably under seven yards or so, I, it would still be reasonable. It wouldn't be pinpoint, but it would be reasonable. Yeah. I yeah. think you could take down a bad guy if you had to. Right. It would be comical, but, uh, but yes. Uh, Bloody Soup is asking, uh, uh, talk about the SIG X Compact if you guys have seen it. Um, I, not in person. I have not seen it in person. I've only stared at it on the SIG website, salivating a little bit because I can't wait to get a hold of one. Yeah, I've seen pictures. I haven't seen one in person. But to me, I, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad gun. It just doesn't do anything for me personally. I think it would be a great shooter. Um, it just doesn't excite me personally. Gotcha. Yeah. And Rhea is saying you can bracket. <laughs> I, I got, we got you now. We're, yeah. we're all good. We're square. <laughs> yeah. um, and Mateo is saying, uh, Mateo, good to see you, by the way. Uh, he's talking what Sage Dynamics has done in a recent video. I'll have to check that out too. I'm curious about that. Uh, but, but I think that goes along with, again, if you, if you've got some time behind guns and I think all of us do uh, that there, there probably is a, a natural, you're probably not seeing this, but a natural point, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, at least, to a degree where your gun is in relation to how you typically shoot it. So even though this doesn't have sights, I know that if I look across the slide and barely, barely see the front of it, it's going to hit the target. It's not going to hit it exactly where I want it, but it's going to hit the target at reasonable distances. Yeah. I mean, it's not like putting it behind your back and, you know, shooting without looking. You're, you don't know what you're going to hit there, but I think if you throw it out, you've got, you know, you've basically got the, you know, the range or, or I guess I'm trying to say your setup kind of locked in your brain. So you're used to doing something, even if you're not seeing the sights. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, however, I do warm up at the range by shooting behind. Uh, oh, oh, sweet. Yeah. You got to try to do it when you're doing cartwheels. That's even better. Right. Right. Uh, Steven saying sweet slide color, man, they did a phenomenal job. The color matching and you guys will see it on video, but the color matching is, is, incredible and i told him i i that's not a big deal to me it, i just you know do your thing you're you're an artist they they did a great job with it yeah it looks nice uh let's see um uh, scott is saying i've actually been watching the sage dynamic videos ks you should check out his hollow sun one um he beat it it still kept working uh, that's very cool i did catch his one where he talked about uh, the dot size, he's kind of changed his mind a little bit on the dot size, um, which, and, and I prefer a smaller dot. I always have, I think a 3.25 or 3.5, somewhere around there is a really good balance personally. 
Yeah, because when you turn up a three two five or a three five zero, when you turn it up, you know it's it's going to like you know illuminate a little thicker. So if you start with a one and you turn it all the way up to the brightness, you know I think it could even be a three. You know if you really brightened it up a lot. Right. Right. Um, in all seriousness, is saying KS had some issues with the Brownells BCG and SBA4 tack brace uh, on back order. Then my build is done. Okay, well, uh, keep us posted on that. We'll be excited to hear about it. Yeah. Let's oh, see. real quick, and I had. I'm sorry if you got a question. If there's a question, please. No, that's okay. Go ahead. I just had a, a question for, and this is for everyone in the chat. Okay, and yourself if you've seen it. Have you seen the new Anderson limited edition lower? I just I want to see if, I, and I can't see the comments, but I want to see if they just start flying. It's the new Anderson lower limited edition that they put out on Instagram. I about had a fit. Okay. And I, think, I think they are going to get some freaking hate over it. <laughs> I, you've got me curious. I'll have to go check them out. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what it is. I just want to see if these comments start flying because I can't see them. All right, I'll uh, keep an eye on. And um, as comments are starting to come in, uh, Ree is asking how many people are from Arizona. He's from Tucson. He wants to know. So shout out to Arizona. Um, so Sheck is asking about the uh, Sig Romeo 4 uh, because I put a picture out on Instagram uh, with the MPX and it's got a, uh, a Romeo 4 on it. And I see there's some some flickering on there. So sorry, guys, if the uh, screen is flickering. I guess yeah. the, camera, the camera does that, apparently. Yeah, I see it too. Uh, <laughs> But uh, uh, the Romeo Four, I actually I like quite a bit. It's it's fine. Um, I you know I don't have enough experience with uh, red dots, especially red dots mounted on uh, ARs or uh, AR pistols, that sort of thing, to formulate very much of an opinion. But it ran and it was accurate. So it did the exact job that I needed it to do. Uh, so, so in that regard, uh, it was fantastic. The controls were easy to understand. I, I knew exactly what I needed to do with it. Um, and it was keyed in, pretty much ready to go. I mean, I think it was maybe an inch or two low at, at 50 feet, something like that. But, but it really wasn't bad at all. Yeah, I don't know which SIG it was. I shot, and I don't know if it was a four or five. I, I can't remember, but it was the one that's on sale for like $119 now. And I shot it on a uh, buddy's AR, matter of fact, not too long ago. And it was actually pretty nice. Um, you know, I just ran, I think I ran a magazine through it. So it's 30 rounds. And I thought it was pretty nice. 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 Anybody, anybody say anything about the Anderson lower? I'm, I'm checking it out now. Um, Captain Phil said, just saw the lower now. Wow. Just yeah. wow. Um, let's see if anybody else has said anything yet. Um, C Kim is from Arizona. Awesome. Cool. Uh, that's the only comment okay. that I, see. well, I'll go ahead and tell everybody what it is. If they haven't seen it, they can check it out later. What it is Anderson on their lower, this limited edition, they actually put the punisher, but it's the Trump punisher. So it has the hair and it's actually on the lower. And you know how everyone in the world, you know, on the, on the, no, you know, non gun side hates Trump. This is just one more thing for them to bitch about. And I was like, really? I mean, y'all are going to go out there, you know, because they're trying to, you know, they want to kick Trump out and do all this other stuff. So it's just like, okay, you're going to put that on there. Um, but yeah, it's the Punisher and it's got the Trump hair on it and it's on their lower and they are getting some hate over it. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I'll have to go check that out. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Sheck was saying, got a deal on one. Talking about the uh, the Romeo Four. Only issue is that lens cover is garbage. Well, funny story about that. Um, and this is where, uh, guys, I have no problem admitting that I'm a noob and things, and I make mistakes, and and it's all caught on video. You'll be able to see it. And you guys left to look for it and make some comments on it and make fun of me a little bit. Be be nice when you do it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I I shot the MPX. I, I put whatever two hundred rounds through it, something like that for the filming and uh, the cover the front cover, which is clear, by the way, if it had not been clear, this would not be as funny of a story, but, uh, but it's clear. I shot it with the thing on the entire time. Um, I did not notice a difference. It worked fine. Again, I put yeah. rounds on target. In fact, that little gun is incredibly accurate and, and even out to 75 yards standing, no support, anything, just plinking, having fun. Um, I was able to keep basically everything in what you guys would refer to as maybe the, the a circle. So not the red, zone, yeah. The, the, yeah, the very next circle out from that. 
And that's something that I look for and am excited about with a handgun at, you know, 30 yards or 30 yeah. feet rather. So, um, so that I, you know, Hey, it worked. Yeah. And you know, I mean, really, if you kind of think about it, kudos to them because they're making like a weather cover. If you wanted to shoot it in the rain or mist or whatever, you could just pop it out of a bag real quick. Don't have to worry about ripping the covers off of it. Right. Right. Um, yeah, guys, sorry about the flashing. It's actually flashing more than uh, what I would assume it would be doing. So I might need to adjust some settings at a later time. So whatever, it's the disco ball. Somebody said it was a disco ball. I don't remember who it was, but uh, but that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, so Dexter is saying Anderson getting hate is only going to get them exposure too. you know, a lot of people have said negative publicity is still publicity, right? So yeah. marketing. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I just look at it as, you know, if an anti-gun person or something sees something with Trump on it, they're just going to go, oh, my God, now we've got to outlaw those lowers because they have his picture, you know, or the Punisher, you know, joke theme on it with his hair. And I was just like, eh, I don't think that was very wise. I, I actually commented, did y'all make these at 430 on a Friday? Whose idea was this? You know. Right, right. Um, so Harry's got a question for us. Um, guns you wish you had never bought. Ooh. Wow. Um, hmm. Guns I wish I never bought. <laughs> uh, oh. Um, what the hell was the name? Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Oh. The M and P twenty two full size, uh, yeah, the full size M and P twenty two, and I bought it, shot it. Now, just so you know, this was the one that Walther made for Smith and Wesson. Okay, so I shot it. It could only shoot about twenty to thirty rounds, and then it would foul up. Um, I also had a broken, what was it, a broken extractor, I think, or something. And I had to send it back to them. Then they had to send it to Walther to have it fixed. So it took, like, literally, like, three and a half, four months to get it back. Then when I got it back, I shot 20 rounds through it, and it would foul up. Um, and so I'd have to run a bore snake through it, and then it would be okay. And after that, I got rid of it. Hmm. Interesting. Now, now, they're 22 compact that Smith and Wesson makes is money. But this was a full size. Hmm. Yeah. I had a full size, uh, years ago and, and I had good luck with mine. Uh, but you know, 22s, 22s are, are finicky. No doubt yeah. about it. I mean, I ran CCI through this thing. I tried everything and it, it was just that way. And, you know, Smith and Wesson told me their version is they thought it was the barrel, the barrel, I guess the tightness or the barrel fitment or something. And I didn't know what that had to, you know, because it was the fixed barrel in there. So right. I don't know. But anyway, like I said, I don't have it anymore. But I was expecting, you know, like really, really good, good luck with it. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, well, I'll tell you mine here in a moment because one definitely comes to mind, although there are several. Uh, but Alaskan Ballistics, thank you very much for the super chat. Really appreciate it. And he says, Anderson deserves the hate. Oh, for Pete's sake. Hang on. I got to scroll back. Um, it jumped on me. Uh, Anderson deserves the hate. Uh, Trump, worst two-way president since BHO. Why put someone on your gun who wants to pass red flag laws and ban bump stocks? So there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. Uh, so as far as, and again, thank you, Alaskan. Um, as far as guns, uh, worst gun, one that comes to mind, and, and some people are probably going to not agree with this very much, but the car S9. I, you know, I was excited to review that. That was reviewed relatively early on the channel. Um, and I had had a couple of cars in the past years ago and I had, I had good luck with them. Um, and, and obviously some things have changed over the years. I, I mean, I just couldn't shoot the thing worth a damn. Um, I really couldn't. It was not enjoyable to me. It didn't feel as good in the hand to me. Um, I, I can see why some people would like them. I definitely do. They've, they've, they've got some things going for them, but, uh, um, I, that, that was not a pleasurable gun for me at all. Yeah, and I had the C9, and it was, I despised that gun. I had it for like a month and got rid of it, so I can definitely relate with you on that. 
Yeah, indeed. Um, so we believe it or not, um, tonight is kind of screamed by a little bit. Uh, so thank you all for that very much. Uh, but we probably ought to wrap this dude up. Um, if, if we missed any questions, save them for next time. Uh, for sure. We want to get back to those probably didn't hit as many questions as we, uh, originally wanted to. And I'm going to fix this flashing too, because I feel like I'm going to have a seizure here in just a moment. <laughs> so, um, I apologize for that as well. I'm not sure what the deal is, but, uh, anyway, um, big Johnson, any uh, parting words? No, I just want to thank everyone for being on the chat. You know, we love the family and the interaction that they provide for us. And uh, definitely it's always fun to do this on a Wednesday night uh, with the guys and the family. So it means a lot. Definitely I agree. appreciate the super chats too. We don't expect them, but we appreciate them. Yeah, it's uh, much appreciated for sure. Uh, for sure. Um, Harry, real quickly, Harry is saying, did y'all hear that KE Arms might start providing support for the Hudson H9? Yes. They are currently gauging demand. So very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I got I got an email or a DM on Instagram, and I don't know who sent it to me, but yeah, they have like, oh, and you need to read the article. Uh, Hudson owes them tons and tons of money for all of these parts that they made, and now they're offering to try to sell them, you know, to get their money back. Um, yeah, it's pretty sad. It's a pretty interesting article. It shows the amounts, and I'm like, wow. Hmm. So. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting stuff. So, um, and one last thing, Sheck is saying, wish Harry would make a 43 X holster with a TLR laser light. So Harry, there's your mission. Um, I'll let you guys hash that out, but, uh, uh, you guys, as always, thank you very much for joining us. Um, hopefully nobody had a seizure tonight uh, because of the light effects. Cause it's awful. I will fix that for sure. Uh, but, uh, but we do appreciate it. This is so much fun. Uh, what a great family we all have here. And, uh, and we will definitely see you guys next week. Thanks, everyone. Carry on. Bye, guys.